So it's fascinating. In the Gospel of John, we see these sort of earthquake moments yeah. with the aftershocks. And then we see that in our lives, don't we? These, these dynamic, dramatic revelations of God, his love, his reality. It shakes your whole life. And then there's like a whole variety of ways that people can sort of digest that. Aftershocks mm. cause all kinds of different things to go on. So, Hannah, maybe it's just... Tell us about, for you, a moment where there's been this sort of dramatic breaking in of God, almost like earthquake in your life. Yeah, I, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Because sometimes an earthquake for you sounds like nothing to somebody else. Yeah. But um, there's this, this, a story for me when I was, I was actually traveling in um, Brazil. Um, and I'd got myself into a taxi that I was a little unsure about. I was getting a bit nervous riding, like holding the door handle. And I was just praying and like, Lord, I might have made a mistake here. Like, will you keep me safe? And if you know Rio, you'll know there's the big uh, Christ the Redeemer statue. And as we came around the corner, that came into view. And it came to mind the psalm, you know, I lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? And I was like, oh, it's all right, Jesus, you're watching over me. You're going to keep me safe. And that was already really encouraging. But then that night... I brought some devotionals with me traveling. That night's devotional was that psalm. Wow. And it was just for me the linking of that, not just the sort of physical reminder, yeah, okay, Jesus, thank you for that. To link it with something I then was reading from the word, for me was like a massive moment, mm -hmm. which perhaps doesn't sound super exciting. No, it does, but like but you said, it does, just it does. Just the linking of that and yeah. just thinking it's real and he, he is where my help comes from. And yeah. I can lift up my eyes. So when I'm nervous or when I'm just lying in bed reading the word yeah I can look at Jesus and that has been something that I've remembered that's quite a few years back so yeah. it's something that's yeah kind of held on yeah. all this time yeah and so that you see uh you should and we hope is for you whoever's what you know whoever you are whatever you've done our hope is that there's 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 those moments where it's like a yeah it's like an invasion of God mm. And uh, it may not sound dramatic to somebody else, but for you, it's like, oh, this is yeah. this has hit me, right? Yeah. Um, and so what we see in in uh, actually the section we're looking at today is then what happens after that. Yeah. Um, I found it really interesting in in chapter twelve where um, you know Jesus is asking the Father for His name to be glorified, mm. and a voice comes out and and says it I already have yeah. and it will be and Jesus says that was for your benefit yeah. to everyone there yeah. again like feels like a massive revelation and then it, a couple of verses later it says and then Jesus went and hid from them right <laughs> and you're like what What next yeah. but they, those people just had that big revelation and then he's sort of hidden which I think it can sometimes feel like yeah. in the shadow of a big moment Yeah. you can be like what? what's, what's next and, and why does he do that, do you think? I mean, we had uh, John and Ellie Mumford around, and, and John Mumford used the illustration of a googly. Yeah. Tell us about that. I, I'm going to have to say that was new for me. <laughs> so I was really glad. I don't know cricket. Okay. So I was really glad that he explained that. Yeah. So I, in case it's new for you as well, apparently it's where the bowler bowls in such a way that spins the ball so that it bounces and it could go one way or the other. Is, yeah. that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. And I, was, I think what he was saying is that sometimes... God either throw something or allow something to come our way. Yeah. We're not exactly sure which way we're gonna it's gonna go. Yeah. And then what do we do? How yeah. are we prepared for yeah. it? How do we respond yeah. to it? Is yeah. that what the Googly yeah. was? <laughs> I, I think that's entirely right. I think now they call them mystery spinners a little bit more. Okay. It's like a sense of what how, what's gonna happen when this ball hits the ground. Yeah. And um the illustration is from John's gospel at least. When John, when Jesus' revelation, when his light shines in, when a dead man is raised, when blind eyes are opened, what are you going to do with that? Mm. Because it, I don't know about you, but I think oh, when I was younger in the, in the faith, I used to think, well, if God shows himself to me, it'll be unambiguous. It'll be yeah. obvious. Yeah. You know, if, if Jesus is real, it'd just be so obvious he's real. And I pray, God, that you'd prove yourself to people in a way that they couldn't deny. Mm. You know that? You kind yeah. of... Neon writing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just as your story illustrates, he shows us in a way that you could deny. Mm. You could look back after, ah, oh, you know. It's coincidence. It's just coincidence. Is the biggest one, isn't it? 
And so what we see actually is that the Pharisees, um, after Jesus after Jesus has raised uh, raised Lazarus, <laughs> after the, he's raised Lazarus, they are more keen than ever to get rid of him. Yeah. Uh, and then the disciples. I mean, can you imagine if you'd been one of the disciples there? Man, yeah, that's so exciting. <laughs> and yet, what happens is that um, they 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 kind of seem to just not quite know what to do. Mm. And they Definitely still confusion is a big feeling you get after, yeah. isn't there? Like yeah, a lot of confusion. And Jesus having now to explain loads of stuff yeah. to them, and they're like, yeah. and and uh, is it Philip who says like, show us the Father? Yeah. And he's like, don't you understand yet? You still yeah. don't understand. Yeah. Um, and Judas is there, and he even seemingly still it says he's trying to take money from the money box. So yeah. all of that's to illustrate is that the light shines in, but there's there's multiple ways that you and I can respond to mm. Jesus's revelation of Himself. Yeah. Um, and uh, what? How do we respond to Him? Is a big question. Yeah. It's actually the question of discipleship. Um, and it's kind of a daily question as well. Yeah. As well as the big revelations, it's kind of every day. Yeah. How do I respond? Yeah. What am I going to do about it today? So um, this is this is the most important thing, I think, for us to grasp from this section of 12 to 17, is that, um, just as Hannah said, following Jesus has an element of mystery to it, yeah. where Jesus says something and then he hides. And sometimes when Jesus hides... We can think we've done something wrong, that means he's mm. moved away from us. And in that space, we can also begin to think, maybe he never was here. Yeah. Maybe actually him hiding, he was, he was never here. And, and there's competing narratives that was, you know, this is the best explanation for what has occurred. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's almost like Jesus deliberately lets those moments come to us. Mm. And... Um, he does it to help us see who he really is and to allow people the dignity of choosing to respond to him when they want to respond. Mm-hmm. And what's shocking is that uh, he then, in the, in that moment, will uh, strip down to his under clothes, get a towel and offer to wash your feet. Yeah. It's like it's gone from a very different direction to raising someone from the dead, isn't it? So we Washington. think if if God, we think if God was really present, if He was going to really show His glory, it would be so like you say neon lights, staggering, like wow, like we'd all be in the room, like oh, we're full of awe. Yeah. And actually, Jesus rarely does that. Yeah. What He tends to do is have a towel and say, "Would you like me to wash your feet?" And you think, "Get away, slave! I'm looking mm. for God." Mm. It's quite easily missed. Isn't yeah. It? Or misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a famous book, I don't know if you've uh, heard of or read the book by Dale Ortland, which is called, um, it's about Jesus, oh, Gentle and Lowly it's called. Ah, uh, I've heard of it, but no, I haven't read it. Where the only way, only place in the entire of the Gospels where Jesus describes his character, says, I'm gentle and lowly. Okay. And the idea of Jesus being meek is is profoundly played out by John, who mm. who demonstrates Jesus as more God than any more visibly and obviously God than any other gospel also more visibly demonstrates him as meek Mm. and easy to overlook interesting Um, so uh, what do you you kind of what's the implication of that for us uh, Hannah in terms of sort of discipleship what's the key thing we should do then as we walk through these kind of revelation moments and then hiding moments that's a good question. <laughs> and what would you say to somebody? I mean, if, if somebody's watching this yeah. and they're like, okay, do you know what? Like, I recognise what you're saying, Hannah and Tom. I recognise, actually, even right now, it feels like Jesus is, it feels like God's a bit hidden for me. Mm. And I'm actually starting to question my faith. I'm quite starting to question, like, some things I used to believe, do I still believe? Or yeah. I'm not questioning, but I just find it quite hard. Mm. What, 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 would, what would you say? That's a good question. I think... Um, I think just something that I would look at is often we look at what happened Mm. as the thing to look at. Mm. So like, I felt this way. Mm. I felt really, I don't know, happy or I felt like something. Mm. And then when you lose that feeling, you feel that's the same as you had Jesus and then you don't have Jesus. Right. And I think for me, it's something about 
but what was behind that feeling okay it was Jesus yeah and if I want to explore that more then I need to keep looking at the rest of who is Jesus so the mm. same as like with the heightened moment of Lazarus being raised mm. from the dead mm. to the low moment of washing the feet mm. as they might have seen it mm. a lowly moment that's a very different how it would have been experienced by the disciples but it's still Jesus yes so I think looking at who it is who created those moments is like okay this is God yeah. So let me see what else is God. I, I, for an example would be, um, sometimes I think on a Sunday you can have such a lovely time mm. as church mm. and we can worship together mm. and there's a great talk and then we pray for each other. And it, you know, you can have a nice coffee and it feels good. And then you go back to work on Monday and you're really busy then all week. And then you can get to the next Sunday and be like, oh, the Bible, I didn't think about that all week. And oh, I forgot about God all week. And... Mm. Um, but actually, if we try and think what's behind the Sunday is Jesus. So where's Jesus on Monday? When I wake up on Monday, when I'm at work, mm. where is he? Where am I looking at? Like, where's my focus? And just coming back to, okay, Jesus, where are you in my job? Mm. Where are you in my mm. home? Where are you in my other weekly things? Mm. Um, I don't know if that really answered your question. Yeah, but so I think I think, something about... So we associate, yeah. be, we associate that Jesus is close to us when we feel good. Sometimes, and if yeah. we uh, haven't thought of him or haven't felt him, we feel like he must be a long way away from us. Yeah. But actually what you're saying is like, if you follow the sign, which is a big theme in John, follow the mm. sign of that moment when he feels close, that doesn't just show you like, he doesn't like kind of zoom in and zoom out. Like It's not like a sort of a fickle yeah. being. He is the Logos. He is the word yeah. who is present in everything, through everything. And so therefore, if you really understand the sign of a Sunday, what you'll understand yeah. is he, he felt close there. That shows that he is close. Mm. I felt his love there. That shows he is love. Yeah. I saw Jesus and he seemed to act a bit like God. That means he is God. If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Like mm. I am the Father, our one. Like, so you look at the sign of those high moments and you carry that through to the d low moments. Yeah. There's a phrase that I've heard said quite a lot. Was, don't doubt in the darkness what you saw in the light. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's what it's the so the yeah. sign is a really profound thing, isn't it? And, um, and I, I think the same idea could be don't doubt in the kind of monotony mm. what you felt in the ecstasy. Yes. Or like the joy yeah, of yeah, that's... collective worship in the monotony of daily yeah. grind and work. Yes. Don't doubt. It's the similar kind of parallel. Which I think is so encouraging because, you know, there are faiths and religions out there where it is all about you. You have to put yourself back before God mm -hmm. and you have to pray like this and do these things and that brings you before God and he may well look down on you and say, yeah, you're okay. But but the God of grace, like Jesus came to give abundant grace and truth, yeah. is that it doesn't depend on us doing those things. He is here for us. He is present. And we can go through a week and maybe we've not consciously considered Jesus at all, but he's never left us. Yeah. He's never stopped being for us. He's never, it's never changed the fact that he's died for us, mm. that he wants to raise us, he wants to give us sight. He wants to... None yeah. of these things are affected by what we've done. Exactly, yeah. Which is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Thankfully. Uh, so, <laughs> and practices can be super helpful, can't they? Because we yeah. don't want to... Sunday, to attend Sunday service is a practice, which mm -hmm. is like, I think it's just... For all of church history until the last twenty years, everyone said like this is this is what it is to be a Christian. Yeah. This is what it is. Like for two thousand years and actually for the four thousand years of Judaism beforehand, mm. this is what it was and is. But it's not just the Sunday thing, is it? Mm. Just give us a flavour of a couple of practices that you use to draw those moments of ecstasy that you called or present conscious presence of Jesus that help you then carry more of that that you, more signs to follow. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I'm wanting to get better at. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't say that um, I've got it nailed. But one thing, I think talking about the work and the contrast between weekends and work, um, I know there have been times in my life where work has been everything. Mm -hmm. Every thought, every action, every moment is sort mm -hmm. of been occupied by work. And I realised that took over. Mm -hmm. And then it was God mm -hmm. and what's God doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took me a while and it's still something I have to do to be like, okay, I'm going to let me just lay that at the cross or mm. at your feet, Jesus. It's very important. Like our work is important mm. or our family situation is important, our relationships. Mm. But I think if ever I spot that something is taking over 
more of my thought, more of my time, my emotional energy. Mm. I say to go act, like actively in my head, picture laying it down. Oh, brilliant! To say, I want to put you back on top. Like I'm sure those things are good, but let me make sure you're on top. Yeah. And if it doesn't feel, help me put you on top. Yeah, yeah. So that I can make sure. Okay, then I'm like, what are you doing, God? Yeah. What are you doing today? What are you doing? So just give us, just give us, just make it super, super, super practical for us. So you're, you, how do you realise this is going on? Um, so I think for me, it's kind of, if I look at where I'm prioritising my time. Okay. Uh, time is a big one. Yeah. Uh, emotional energy. Yeah. And things like money as well. So you feel like, oh, I'm really rushed at the moment. Why am I so rushed? Yeah. Oh, I'm really, I'm really exhausted. Why am I so, so, why am I so exhausted? And then you'll have a question of why am I? Okay, let's look at where my priorities are. So I'm currently in a in a season. If if I'll just be really honest, yeah. Uh, where I need to figure out Sabbath. Yeah. I I've got quite a lot of work. Yeah. That keeps up quite a lot yeah. of my week. Um, and we're in a wonderful church that has all sorts of great yeah. activities. Yeah. And I've got family and friends, yeah. and I just realise my time is gone. Yeah. And I'm not prioritising space. Yeah. In my week. Yeah. For God to change anything. Yeah. yeah. I'll get to a Sunday and be like, oh, here's my God time, but the yeah. rest of the week has been busy. Yeah. So something I'm trying to look at at the moment is like, where do I need to yeah. pull back yeah. and make sure I'm allowing God that space to be like, I've got your attention now. Okay. Even if it's just to chill. Yeah. But with God. Yeah. But intentionally being like, Lord, I'm going to block out this time. Wonderful. Because I realised, I get to the end of the week and I'm frazzled. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's not helpful. That's yeah. not, Yeah. I can't hear God. I can't. Yeah. So for me at the moment, it's time. Wow. Where do I need to pull back? Yeah. All fun things. And just give us a flavour then, so you create that space for God, but what, what, do you do anything in that time? Like, so I think it would depend. Okay. Like if it's a nice day, <laughs> you might actually get out. Okay, go for a walk, um, yeah. Try and be active. So for me, nature is really yeah, good. Yeah. So if I can get somewhere yeah. where I'm actually looking at colours and nature, yeah. that's helpful. Yeah. Um, I'm realising at the moment that quiet is really important. Yeah. So there's so much noise. Yeah. Um, and for most of this year, I've put my TV away. Yeah. Because you could just have noise on in the background yeah. all the time. And I realise I just need quiet sometimes. Mm. Not to have music, mm. TV in the background. Mm. Mm. Um, it's whatever it feels is mm. coming up as the kind of dominating thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. And, and of course Jesus kind of taps into this, doesn't he, in chapter 15, which is maybe one of the most famous uh, love sections it. Absolutely of love it. all of John. Yeah. Uh, Give him the time seems to be what he's saying. Do you, shall we read it? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, so John 15 from 1 is, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Okay, cool. Wow. I mean, is it, even if you're reading that, it's like, okay, Good, this, it? <laughs> yeah, there's this passage you just kind of, every yeah. time you think, oh, this is yeah. taking me somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I, so just a couple of things pull out from this, um, because I think as soon as we talk about practices or, mm. you know, it, when I grew, when I first came to faith, it was quiet time. That was the thing okay. that everyone said. Yeah. Uh, or Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Or I'm busy enough, like you're telling me there's something else I need to do. Mm. Um Jesus is really clear that when he's saying he wants us to remain in him and abide in him, uh, it's for two reasons, uh, two primary reasons. Number one, so that we can be fruitful. Yeah. 
Because with that, if we don't do that, we can't do anything. We can mm-hmm. achieve, we can do lots of things, but they don't achieve anything that really counts. Yeah. And the second one is so that his joy would be in us. Yeah. So I don't know how many, I mean, the trouble is now we have adverts all the time, right? Yeah. But there's not many things that genuinely and realistically offer you, this will make you fruitful. Like you, If you do this, it will really enable you to be involved with things that count for all eternity. Mm-hmm. And this will it's just be so much joy will be in you if you do this. I mean, that's quite yeah, cool, isn't it? It's a massive offer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like, uh, how much is money is this going to cost yeah. me? Is it? Yeah. And um, I don't know, just one of the things I... W- uh, one of the prayers I pray is like, Lord, would you just clear out? Like you're talking about noise. Like this, this is this clutter of our culture where everything is a transaction. Everything's mm-hmm. an advert for something. Yeah. I, I get so I so cynical about somebody promising this will change your life or this will do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just we hear it a hundred times time, a day. Yeah. Um, so Lord, just for those of us who hear those words, it's like almost like it's just. We've been the paper cut of mm. false and unfulfilled promises has taken away our hope that this could really be true. Mm. That God, would you restore that? That we can really feel like through this practice of abiding, there would be joy and fruitfulness. Mm. Isn't that cool? It's amazing. Um, and so it's a great image for people like me who are visual people. Mm. It's such a clear image mm. to hold on to mm. as the vine and we're branches mm. in that. It's mm. so helpful. And I think um, I think if you are like me, then and I don't think many people are. Increasingly, I think I'm a bit <laughs> weird. <laughs> but some of us are people who um, we think we want to make best use of every minute. Yes. And. And therefore, I'm so prone to thinking there's probably some emails I should be looking at. Mm-hmm. There's probably some research I should be doing on something I should be reading, something I should be learning, something I should be doing. There should be, must be something I should be doing right now. Yeah. And Jesus says, if you live that way, you're going to achieve nothing. Mm. Because it, it's all about him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite strong, isn't it? So therefore, oh, maybe the best thing I could do with this next half hour, I've got a super busy week, I'm so stressed out, the best thing I could do with this next half hour is deliberately abide in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Achieve nothing. Yeah. And achieve everything by doing nothing. Yeah. Um, I recently had COVID. Yes. And it kind of took me out for about 10 days. Yeah. And I think five of those days it took me to get to that point of stop trying to be productive yeah. whilst in bed with COVID. Yeah. yeah. And actually, <laughs> it took me so long to get to the point of this has made me stop. Yeah. And fortunately, Jesus is normally much gentler and doesn't yeah. kind of force it on us. Yeah. But there's something like, wow, why is that productivity so built in? That mm. like, even when you're sick, you, it's hard to rest. Wow. I wonder if I had a better habit of resting because Jesus has said that's good. It might not come as a shock yeah. when you get laid out by something. Yeah. Um, and I guess just the final thing on this is that um, it, it, sometimes this passage can be used as uh, I mean, it's all good, right? It's all good. But sometimes this can, this passage can be exclusively used. I mean, somebody said to me once, like, I've just realised all I have to do is abide. I just abide. So um, okay. I just sit on my own and I just, you know, I just don't do anything. Yeah. And it's like, well, have you read like the latter part of that section about abiding Jesus? Because he explains what it means to abide. And even at the moment, you know, there's some very well-known names across the world who talk about abiding as meaning solely do just on your own, spend time in solitude and silence. Yeah. But Jesus says what abiding is in this passage, which is if you obey my commands. Mm-hmm. So, and he's talking not to you as an he's talking to you as an individual, but he's talking to the people of God as a community. So, just to kind of land this thing, what would it look like for us corporately to abide by being together and obeying? Corporately. Yeah, well, that's something to think about, right? <laughs> that's something to think about. So you, so uh, you can be present in small group. Uh, with others you just get together socially with them Mm -hmm. Uh, you you know sabbath can be and has always for all of the history of the church sabbath has been you gather with church to worship to hear from the word to pray for Mm -hmm. one another to eat together to 
do stuff together. So, uh, and anything you can think of that Jesus has said, if you do that, you are abiding in him, mm-hmm. whether you feel rested or not. Yeah. That's quite cool, isn't it? That's good. It's quite simple and easy. Like Just read through uh, any of the commands that Jesus gives, and he, he, gives, he gives a new command, I love one another. Mm-hmm. Every time you choose to love somebody else, you actually are abiding in Jesus. Yeah. It's quite cool, isn't it? Every time you hold your tongue. Yeah. Or say something kind. Yeah. Yeah. You're abiding Words in Words and actions and, yeah. So we want to hold both, right? We don't want to just go off and be activists. <laughs> and we don't want to just sort of be what they call quietists who just are just sitting, okay. sit and do nothing. Oh, I'm just in solitude and silence on my own with the Lord. Uh, you want both? Yeah. You want both? Yeah. And because had... Jesus did that, right? Yeah. When he went away and hid, it yeah. was often because he was like with the Father. Yeah. Like, yeah. And some of that. us, some of us need to go away to be with the Father way more often. Mm-hmm. And some of us just need to get off our butts and do a bit more. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> that, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, true. And if we do that together, we'll abide. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so um, <laughs> maybe we just finish with a story. Do you have an example oh. of how you feel like you uh, something what you see the lord's done or something you more that you've seen him show of himself to you through this either of these versions of abiding um well, yeah it's kind of funny what you said actually because just before i came to Croydon vineyard yeah. which is quite a few years ago now um i've been looking at churches for a while and as many of you know going to new churches is not easy so when you've done it a few times and you just haven't quite connected i moved to croydon tried one church it wasn't for me yeah so i just said to the lord that's it yeah it's just you and me happy to pray happy to like hang out you and me but i'm done with the church mm. sort of community mm. and it's one of the clearest i've heard god like speak in my heart was you've just completely got like misunderstood mm. you've just got it all wrong mm. um and i realized that actually the loving others is being with God and mm. is loving God mm. um, and then I was pushed to try again and found mm. Croydon Vineyard yeah. and amazing because had I not then there's been so much through being back in that church community mm. and mm. giving time to relationships and to serve and to it's just in so much mm. of Jesus in my life change mm. but also mm. in others and yeah yeah, I, I'm really grateful that the Lord didn't just go yeah okay yeah. you just leave it there but yeah well, wow. and, and if you don't know Hannah, um, you won't realise that uh, if you went around our, our, our church community uh, and asked people, you know, who has really helped you with Jesus? Who's re- so, so many of them would name Hannah. She's been used so much by the Lord. And, and the thing, like, really profoundly, like, our church is a healthy, growing, thriving place. We've got lots of problems. Like, I make lots of mistakes. <laughs> Hannah sorts them out. Like, there's a lot of things like that. But... There are those moments, brings us back to that thing. Jesus speaks to us, and then we can choose what do we do. Will we choose to do what he asks us to do? Yeah. And if we do, huge fruit and some joy yeah. comes, right? Yeah. Or will we be like the Pharisees? Will we be like Judas, who kind of, yeah, you know that, what, but actually I do think I'm just going to keep doing, mm. finding new explanations. Um, so let's let's be people who choose uh, to be attentive to Jesus, yeah. uh, to abide and do what He asks us to do, uh, and to recognise that that is abiding in the God of Grace, who abounds in grace. Yeah. He's not here to make things hard for us. He's just inviting us into joy and fruitfulness. Mm. And if we simply learn to be attentive to Him, we don't have to become somebody else. Not an extra job on our to-do list. We just actually begin to see, wow, yeah. some amazing things will go on. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. So there you go. <laughs> it's been great you've been with us today. <laughs>